Hi, I'm State Senator Michael Brady, and this is another episode of Brady Works, because I work for you, the constituents of the 2nd Plymouth Bristol District, and I'm your State Senator, and I periodically have guests on the show, and tonight we have Pat Monteith, who has won an award in the State House amongst uh, many other unsung heroes in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And uh, the Commonwealth honors uh, heroines of women who don't make the news but make the difference. Each year, the past 18 years, the Massachusetts Commission on the Status of Women Issues has chosen Unsung Heroine of the Year Awards. And this ceremony celebrates women across the Commonwealth who make tremendous contributions to their community through everyday acts of heroism. The Commission's work with members of the Massachusetts State Legislature who nominate women in their district of tremendous merit. Pat Monteith was my nominee to receive the recognition this year. And I'd like to also thank and like to briefly recognize the other awardees from the district, Dottie Fulginetti of Easton, nominated by Majority Leader Claire Cronin, Carmen Figueroa, nominated by State Representative Michelle Boy, and Lindsay Wright of Women, who was nominated by State Representative Alice Sullivan. And Pat is an unparalleled advocate for STEM education, diversity, women's issues, involved with the NAACP, and I'm going to let Pat speak because she knows more about herself than I do, so she can tell you a little bit about herself, and, and it's amazing. You've only been here since 2010, as was mentioned. I know you did live right up the street in Randolph, but you've been very active in our community, and I thank you for all your advocacy work in the community, and I know you did some work with NASA as well, a volunteer, I should say, because you didn't get paid for it. Um, but. You've been a tremendous um, advocate in the community leader in our community. So, Pat, I'm going to let you speak, but I just want to do Pat Monteith. Thank you, Senator Brady, and thank you so much for the nomination. It really meant a lot to me um, to be honored amongst all the other women in the state. Um, and it was a great ceremony. Too bad it wasn't live. It was virtual, but it was still a wonderful ceremony. So um, thank you again. Really appreciate it. Um, you know, growing up, my grandmother was a perfect role model for me because she was, you know, a stalwart in the community. Um, and I grew up in Watertown and I lived with my mother and my grandmother in Watertown and she was always involved in things. So by the time I became a teenager, I didn't think twice of it. Um, and so I remember a time when I was maybe 14 or 15 and there was a massive flood um, in Ohio and it really struck me and I was actually going door to door to collect money to send to Ohio for the uh, relief campaign um, and that started me and from there I actually became a town meeting member in Watertown. I ran for school committee in Watertown. Um, when I moved to Randolph um, back in uh, never mind, that would date me. <laughs> <laughs> but I became very active in Randolph. Um, I was chair of the Cable Advisory Committee, and that's what brought cable television into Randolph, and I uh, was a town meeting member before they switched to the different type of government there. Um, and then when I moved to Brockton, it was you know, only right and just for me to get very involved in Brockton right from the beginning. Well, I want to thank you for all your activity in Brockton. I know. Um, you've been involved with the NAACP, and if you can tell us a little bit about what you've done with them as well as AXO, uh, Afro-American Cultural Technology and Scientific Olympics program. Can you want to speak Ooh, a little bit I about that? I almost can't say that acronym <laughs> without looking at the words myself. Um, so I was um, friends with Michael Curry, um, who was president of the Boston branch of the NAACP, and he had said to me, okay, so what are you going to do for the branch? and I learned about the ACT SO program, which is a mentoring and competition program for high school students. So I got involved in my first two years, absolutely loved it. And then when Steve Bernard, who was the president of the Brockton branch of the NAACP, found out that I was mentoring kids in Boston, he got kind of upset. And so I was like, sure, I'm a Brockton resident now. I, I can you know, come and do things with Brockton. So uh, I got involved with the uh, ACTSO program then, um, and oh my goodness, uh, probably a hundred students we've brought through the ACTSO program over the past seven years. Um, we've brought um, maybe 25 or 30 to um, national competition, and 
probably have won about 12 first or second place awards. So we're very, very proud of what we've done and the program that we have. It's not just me, you know, I'm co-chair. I've been co-chair up until recently, uh, but it's really great. I'm also very actively involved in NAACP and a lot of other different initiatives. Uh, I'm treasurer of the branch, have been for the last five years. Um, and I don't know, I get involved in membership in the MLK Breakfast and lots of other things. It's a great organization, has grown tremendously over the past um, four or five years since Phyllis Ellis became president. Um, and uh, we do some incredible things for the community. Well, it is a great organization. I've been a member for several years myself, and um, I'm on a prostate cancer awareness group that we have to educate uh, men about getting tested, and it's a thing that men don't want to talk about, but, you know, my father had prostate cancer, and, and it's more prevalent in that community, and we uh, have been doing a great job, and Steve Bernard's been involved, and Steve Bernard is the former president, and they bring him back, and Phyllis Ellis has, has been a president for a couple of years now, and um, she does a great job, and it's a great organization, and uh, I thank you for all your efforts with that organization as well. You know, let me jump in and say one thing. Since um, NAACP Brockton has gotten involved in the whole prostate cancer awareness campaign, we have significantly reduced ca uh, cancer, uh, prostate cancer with men in Brockton significantly over the past three or four years. Absolutely, and we're fortunate that we've put more funding <laughs> in the budget for this, and it's not just Brockton, but Boston and other communities as well. So we have great leadership in the state house that uh, it's brought awareness to that, and they've helped to fund that, and we've got great advocacy, but it, it starts with the unsung heroes behind the scenes, and you know, Brockton's known for their sports teams and so forth in the history, but it's a, a lot of the unsung heroes like yourself who work behind the scenes and don't always get the credit you deserve, and that's why I'm, I'm grateful that we're able to nominate you for this. Um, and I also know you've been a Solar Systems Ambassador. Uh, solar System Ambassador is, uh, I think I told, I've told you earlier that when I was a teenager, I wanted to work for NASA. That was my dream job. I was influenced by, you know, John F. Kennedy saying, we're going to land on the moon by the end of this decade. Hmm. I'm giving away my age. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> um, and, you know, I went to college to get my math degree, and then life takes its turns. And it wasn't until I retired from UMass Boston back in 2012 um, that I found out about this uh, NASA ambassador program. And, uh, you know, it's like, I want to get involved. And they had me give them seven references. They checked all seven references. Wow. Um, and so I've been a NASA ambassador for about four or five years. Uh, I do a lot at the Brockton Library. I do other things at the Brockton Library, too. Um, but I also go around to libraries. Um, you know, one of my favorite places to go is the Senior Center here in Brockton, as well as the one in Avon. Um, but I'm out there talking about asteroids. A couple of weeks from now, I'll be doing something on the Perseids meteor shower um, and women of NASA, like Wally Funk, who, mm -hmm. you know, just went up with uh, uh, Bezos. Um, wonderful experience for her and for women in general. Yeah, we've come a long way, but we still have a lot more to do, as, as you know. But I, d I do remember uh, when we did have the the landing on the moon in 1969, and they gave these cardboard rocket <laughs> ships away at a, at a gas station at the end of Route 27 Reynolds Highway, and I got this gigantic cardboard fake, you know, replica of the rocket ship, the yeah. Apollo, and, and it was a great experience as a young lad, and, and then I remember like a week later, a car had crashed into the gas station, <laughs> so the, the whole system had uh, been shut down, but luckily I was able to get that, copy of that, uh, the Apollo uh, rocket ship back then. It was Do you pretty still cool. have it? I don't. I, I do have a lot of things because my parents were in the, you know, my father was in drywall, my mother was in the stitching in the factories and clothing, and they, when they semi-retired, they got into the antique flea market business. So I still have a lot of their cut glass and milk glass savings, and, and I, um, I still save some memorabilia of things when I was a kid. I, as I met Bob Rio and Phil Spazito, I got struck by a car in 1972. But I, I don't know, you were also talking about music, and I played in bands years ago and I had even longer hair than I have now, and you mentioned you were a drummer. And I, I see you helped launch the Boston Folk Festival. I did. Um, you know, I was the founder and the general manager of the radio station, the National Public Radio Station at UMass Boston. Um, and you know I've got a lot that I'm involved in. 
part of it is because I get bored easily. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I never let go of anything. I would just add more things. It used to drive my staff crazy. Um, and we did a lot of folk music at that time at the radio station. And so the natural transition for us was to um, have a Boston Folk Festival. And we got some seed funding from the Massachusetts Cultural Council for three years, I think it was. And it was incredible. Uh, it ran for 12 years while I was there. Um, at one point, we had seven stages running simultaneously wow. over three days. We were using Boston Common. We were using you know, some other places in downtown Boston. Once we went to, back to the UMass campus, we used literally just about every space on the campus. But it, at, uh, at, at its height, we had an uh, audience of over 10,000 people. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. I've gone into first night at the Commons years ago and of course been to UMass when James Taylor has performed for mm -hmm. different uh, elected officials who have come into town. And I've gone to Newport and we did try to get uh, a blues festival started in Brockton when Jack Eunice was the mayor and I helped uh, organize that and we did get James Montgomery down here. Unfortunately, the day that the, it was starting, it poured, so they had to reschedule and then a lot of people didn't show up, but he also performed at Joe Angelo's and a couple other places in Brockton while he was here. And we had a good repertoire of uh, blues players and I love rock and roll and blues, so it was great to see it. Um, but it hasn't continued. We'd like to see more activity. I know that you know, we had the, um, the festivities at the old Kresge 5 and 10 building that was torn down and it was an empty lot and we've had events there Prova, and, and now it's behind the old Baptist Journal, behind Joe Angelo's and, and those other restaurants, Crystal Cafe. But uh, it's great to try to bring more people to downtown. It, it's a safe environment. Unfortunately, people see some of the less fortunate situations when they're driving around certain neighbors. And I'm not denying that there isn't crime that goes on because we're all well aware of that. But um, it, it generally is only affects the people that are doing the bad things. I mean, there's a lot of business that we try to help downtown and and help support them and we have new growth where I think we've got a um, new, new microbrewery coming to downtown at that new building where the Kresge building used to be. There's a lot of investment going on. Uh, you know, at the state level we're getting more Chapter 90 money coming into Brockton and, and funding is increasing for the schools which has been great. This is the highest increase for the public school education system than ever before and I know you're very active with STEM. Yes, I am. So th that's great, and uh, this is stuff that we didn't have when I was in high school. I graduated in 1980, and you know, when we had those computers on the walls, they were the size of the walls, and now you have a computer that's the size of your cell phone in your pocket, and it's come a long way, but stem cell research and all this stuff, and it's, it helps to save lives out there. And um, even with the vaccine, I know there's been a lot of controversy, depending if you listen to the misinformation. I try to listen to the experts and the doctors and the scientists who, who are telling us the truth, about getting vaccinated, and I do encourage people, um, you know, it's not only protecting yourself, but protecting your family members and other people. And I know there's some people that cannot take the vaccine because they may have an allergic reaction, but if you can enable to get it, I know but that Brockton's come a long way than when we first started. Uh, unfortunately, the administration um, in the beginning, you know, they, they kept changing the mind. We weren't getting enough vaccines in Brockton, and Thank goodness to um, Sue Josh from the Neighborhood Health Center. She went directly to President Biden, got, got deliveries directly from Washington. We set up a, a thing at the, um, the old Shaw Center where the old Campanella Stadium was. They did a yeoman's work and uh, I got vaccinated. Luckily I had no side effects and so forth. I know some people did depending on which vaccine, but you, you gotta be conscious of not only ourselves, but the people around us. And, and all this education with STEM is so important to educate the younger people because they're, um, they're the next generation that's going to be running this country at some point. And plus, they could be the next doctors and nurses. I know even Mass Lake Community College, I attended there and I know that um, there was a waiting list to get into the nursing program. Every day I get calls over there and we hope to get an Allied Health Center built where the old Christo's restaurant was going, oh. used to be, sure. but the governor cut that from the funding, and now there's a lot of deliberation going on what we're gonna do with that site because it's been a vacant ISO since, mm -hmm. and um, Massoid had asked us to put out for an RFP, request for proposal, because you can't just sell it to anybody, it's gotta go through the bidding process, but the money would help to renovate some of the existing buildings on the campus of Massasoit. And that's a great community school. I, you know, I, I come from a, uh, not a wealthy family. I worked at Superior Bakery Nights in Brockton and, and went to school days there. And then I went later on as well. And I worked at Massey Community College with a grant program that helped women and minorities get jobs in the construction field. Mm -hmm. And we had higher placements than any other community college 
in, unfortunately, one of our former conservative governors cut the funding for that. And it's too bad because same with the Allied Health Center. This is so important, especially for the diverse population we represent. And they don't only take students from Brockton, but all over the community, the South Shore, and even in towns quite uh, far away. And it's a great start at community college, and then they can earn their associates and then transfer to Bridgewater State or, or Stonehill, one of the uh, other schools. You know, there's a, a lot of students who have gone from Massasoit to some of the Ivy League schools Absolutely. as well. Um, I learned about um, Massasoit, oh goodness, probably five or six years ago, and it was at a distance for me. I really didn't understand it. Um, they ended up hiring me to run their closing event for their 50th anniversary. Wow. Um, brought in Tom Rush, mm -hmm. speaking about you know concerts and stuff, um, and a few other people. Uh, and I got to know a lot of the staff there. I got to know a lot of the faculty there. Um, I've taken a lot of the students that I've mentored, and I've actually put them into Michael Bankson's um, summer program over there. He does a lot with bees, mm -hmm. incredible program with bees. Um, and the kids come out of there, and they know more leaving there in just a summertime than they've learned in a year's worth of classroom. I've heard this from several of the students. Absolutely. It's great, great. And, and we, had, we had great staff over there as well. I know they just uh, voted to appoint a new president, which I think is great news. Oh. I, I know we had somebody from Bridgewater State who filled in as an interim president, and she did a great job and worked with us in the community. And now they, uh, the board over there just uh, voted to have a new president come on, and she's going to be coming on soon. And I think it's great for our community, and, and we definitely need that because that's a great community school uh, for our city in Brockton. And, you know, maybe at some point, like up, at, I mean, up in Quincy College, where they expand it to a four-year school, maybe at some point we can expand that to a four-year school. Um, I'm a big supporter of uh, higher education and public education across the board, but um, a lot of families in our, our financial gaps can't afford to go to these Ivy schools unless they get the scholarships or the grants. And as you mentioned, they start off at Mass State and then they're able to transfer to a Ivy League school or whatever. And, sure. and as we know, families are struggling with higher education costs. I mean, we've passed legislation to try to keep the costs down. We've also helped with grants and so forth and keep the, the, the loan interest rates because the poor families, these, these kids, and I call them kids, they're young adults, but they go on and, and they're getting a great job in the workforce, but they got these loans um, that are a burden on their shoulder for like 10 years later or even longer, and it's either a burden on their parents or themselves, and you know, it's tough for young families. We see the housing costs going through the roof in this community, and you know, we're trying to put more uh, workforce development housing. In downtown, we've done a lot of great development, and there's more on the way, um, and we're helping with state funding. I do a lot of work with mass housing, and um, not just in Brockton, but around the surrounding towns. But for our downtown, it's helping to convert these old factory buildings or vacant buildings that was office space into some workforce development housing. And as I mentioned, the, the earlier conversation about the old Kresge 5 and 10 building that used to be downtown. I used to call it the 5 and 10 cent store as a kid. Um, that's a great building they've built there, and, and I've been in there. I, I'd be happy to live in there myself. It's modern, beautiful facility. They've got parking underground, so there's plenty of off-street parking. You don't have to worry about parking. And uh, there's other buildings that we helped renovate. And, of course, the Bill Carpenter, our former mayor, the parking garage named after him. That'll help with more parking. But we still have more work to do. I mean, there's a couple other proposals for downtown. And without the help of our federal government, our state delegation working together, in our local mayor and city council, we wouldn't be able to get this done. And, and that's what it's about, is working together. And in, in, uh, from the community's perspective, you don't see the people that work behind the scenes like yourself. You're not always out in the forefront. And sometimes I think sometimes that's a good thing, because you know, uh, sometimes we don't want to be in the headlines. But, um, but it is important for a lot of the unsung heroes like yourself that work behind the scenes and don't always get the credit. And, and that's why, you know, you were highly recommended. Ann Beauregard's a great friend of ours, and she, she puts in a good word for yourself, and she's out there working out, even though she's no longer a city councilor. Mm -hmm. She gives me more information on what's going on in the community than anybody, and she's very active out there in the community, and, and uh, she's another unsung hero out there in the community like yourself. So I know you nominated her last year. Yes, so, um, and there's a lot mm -hmm. of other unsung heroes like yourself out there. So I want to present this before we go on too long, and. Mm -hmm. The show ends. This is a citation from the Massachusetts Senate. Normally we get up and stand up, but I don't want the mic being dragging my neck here. But this is official citation from the State Senate 
Be it known that the Massachusetts State Senate hereby extends its congratulations to Patricia Monteith in recognition of your tireless dedication to community service and STEM education advocacy and of being recognized as the 2021 Unsung Heroine of the Year Awards. And this is signed by the Senate President Karen Spoke of the Clerk, Michael Hurley, and myself, Mike Brady, our State Senator. And normally we'd have the celebration in the State House, but because of COVID, we're still on a semi-virtual working environment. Mm -hmm. um, I know that the leadership said after Labor Day we'll have more people in there. We can go in there as elected officials, but they were still nervous about everybody from the public coming in. And again, we did have some outbreaks at the State House. Uh, some of the workers who cleaned the building had outbreaks. Some elected officials had been diagnosed with COVID over the course between last year and this year. And it's still a, still a um, situation out there. It's not over yet. Everybody thinks, oh, it's a fast and it's over. And it's not, you know, there's different versions of, mm -hmm. of COVID that's coming out, not so much here, but all over the country. And, and you can tell the states that more people got vaccinated, they're safer. But even on the news today, Provincetown, not so much the residents of Provincetown because most of those have all gotten vaccinated, but the tourism industry and people coming from other countries or other states. And if they're not vaccinated, now they're requiring them to wear masks, even in public at certain mm -hmm. uh, places down there. So I'm going to turn this around so we can see it on the photo and present it to Pat. And this is a recognition, this official citation from the State Senate. So I want to congratulate you, Pat. And I, I want to thank you for all your work behind the scenes and all that you do. And uh, we need more people like yourself out there. And there is more people out there. We know that are unsung heroes. But please keep up the good work and keep after us as elected officials because it's, it's the people that are behind the scenes that keep us educate on what we should be doing and what we shouldn't be doing at the state level, where we need to spend the funding and help out, whether it's the small businesses or our residents or education or whatever. And I appreciate all the work you've done. So Thank congratulations. You. Thank you. I know the couple of times I've called you uh, about a couple of things, you know, most recently about um, one of the students who was supporting the dinosaur bill. Mm -hmm. um, and you jumped right on it and said, sure, of course. And you responded immediately to the student, and you responded immediately to me. And that is so much appreciated, you have no idea. Well, thank you. I, um, I, I'm very passionate <laughs> about the work I do, like most of our elected officials here. Not everybody works in the same avenue. I kid with people, if I was ever married, I'd be divorced already because I'm never home in this <laughs> business. Not that I won't put up with me that long, but um, I'm fortunate. I've had great people supporting me in, in, um, in my community and in, in a girlfriend has patients. And, all of the uh, people that we work with, because no one does it alone. And um, we, we did a lot of great work, even though during the COVID epidemic that we're still working our way out of, um, revenue has gone up in the Commonwealth and we're able to get more money. We, the Student Opportunity Act, which we voted for a while back, didn't get funded last year because of COVID, it got put on hold. This year, we're able to cut it from a seven year implementation to a six year implementation. It's gonna be the highest funding ever in the history of the Commonwealth to our public schools. And Brockton is really gonna reap the rewards. They're getting over $20 million. I think it's about uh, $23 million just coming into, into Brockton. Uh, across the Commonwealth, it's 1.5 billion in new funding for K through 12 education. Oh my and, and, and it's great news because these young students, as I mentioned, I come from very humble means. These students need the funding and the teachers need the funding to educate the students in. It's been tough on kids and in the parents and the families with, with virtual learning. And um, it's been tough on a lot of families out there. So as we go back to getting back to the somewhat new normal, which whatever it's gonna be, uh, this funding for education is so important for not only the city of Brockton, but the whole Commonwealth. And um, our infrastructure bills, I mean, we did chapter 90 money, which is for roads across the Commonwealth. Um, it's so important. We put $200 million in Chapter 90 funding. I know Brockton gets a good chunk of that with other communities such as Brockton, but it helps the small towns as well. Municipal Small uh, Bridge Program, $25 million in the budget for that. Mm -hmm. Local bottleneck program, you see the traffic <coughs> issues we have just in Brockton alone, never mind all over the highways. That's important funding for Brockton. Electric vehicles, we're trying to get away from these fossil fuels. And, and we've seen what's happened with the weather this past month, July, with all the rain. But, you know, the solar caps have been melting, the icebergs, it's real. And we've got to take advantage of moving away from fossil fuels and taking care of our environment. You know much more about STEM than you'd probably give yourself credit for. Well, thank you. Well, well I've, I've, I've been very fortunate because I've worked with a lot of great people across the, the board. And uh, 
None of us do it alone. We have a great team at the state level and our local officials. And my staff, um, you know, I, I can't do it alone. I've got a great uh, group in my office and people that work in my community who work from my office as well. I have two part-timers and three full-timers in the state house. And they kind of help keep me in line and keep, tell me where <laughs> I got to be and everything else. But uh, no one does it alone. So, <clears throat> But this, this funding for the schools is so important. Electric vehicles, getting away from fossil fuels. We have a hybrid vehicle at home. Oh, you so, do? Yeah. Excellent. What, what is it? <clears throat> it's a Ford Escape hybrid. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. excellent. Yeah. In so we made that investment a mm, long time ago, 10, nice. 12 years. Yeah. Well, we've got to get more people to invest <coughs> in the hybrid vehicles. And, <coughs> and they, they move. It's not like they're only going 20 miles an hour or anything like people <laughs> think, you know? No, I can tell you that yeah. for a fact. One thing we're pushing for is more charging stations <coughs> as well. Right. And I know where my doctor's office are up on Liberty Street. I, I just noticed it a couple weeks ago. I had a, an appointment. And there's all these charging stations up there, which I'm pleasantly surprised. And mm -hmm. we're helping to get more that is more convenient for people, too. And, and food assistance, because that's been a tough situation for families. Again, during COVID, everybody thinks, oh, everyone's getting a big unemployment check and making more money at home than they were at work. But not everybody. And people are still suffering out there. And, and you know, we have our food banks, the Charity Guild, and in all the food banks in the area and some restaurants that suffered during this COVID they went under they ended up donating food to a lot of to me to give out to local communities in, in the area not just Brockton but all over the South Shore so. Sure the NAACP <coughs> you know the Brockton branch <clears throat> back uh, for Thanksgiving and I think Christmas too uh, we partnered with Lombardo's and uh, Lantana's and um, gave out food baskets um, to I want to say 100 people. Well. See, that, that's another thing we didn't know about you, working behind the scenes. So um, I'm grateful to host this show. I'm gr grateful to have Pat here and grateful to honor her with a citation. And um, I hope you have your back again and maybe you can tell us more about what's going on in your life and what you're doing. Um, because as I mentioned, none of us do it alone. Uh, my name is Mike Brady. I'm your state senator. I'm grateful to be here today, and uh, hopefully we'll do more shows like this. And anybody who ever wants to come on the show is more than welcome. Please contact our office, or for any means, the number is 617-722-1200. And my email is michael.brady at masenate.gov, MA for Massachusetts. Hopefully when we get the state house open up, you're more than welcome to come visit us. And anybody from the public who wants to come in, um, it is a public building. It's not our building as elected officials, and, and uh, it's a great historic building. It's, it's you know, where our country started with the battle at Bunker Hill and everything else there, so, <laughs> and Lexington and Concord. So there's a lot of history in Boston, and even in Brockton. I mean, there was a, there was a great group during the Civil War that fought from Brockton, and uh, we have statues here, and we, we must not forget in City Hall there's a beautiful historic building in Brockton as well. And let's not forget about the women's suffrage movement. Absolutely. And, um, we actually in Brockton had the first local suffrage organization in the state. Well, thank you, Pat. We're going to close here. God bless you. Mm -hmm.